Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, comments or success stories you'd like to share, we want to hear from you on the bright side at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls. We love hearing from you. And you don't have to have a health challenge or a question just if you want to contribute to the conversation. If you've got something interesting to say, got a good take, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team from pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com by clicking on the Join the Team link on our web pages. We'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team. If you want to work for yourself, work out of the home, supplement your income, or just get your products at the wholesale price, click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start your own business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you or your loved ones have benefited from the power of the longevity products, from the power of the Healthy Start Pack and the Fucoy Z and, and the Z Radical and the Ultimate Selenium and Ultimate Niacin and the Nightly Essence, if you've noticed that You've lost weight, you have more energy, you've gotten off your medication. Now you can pay it forward. Help spread the word and you can get paid for it while you do that. Call for a one-time $25 fee. Call 1-866-735-2470 for more info. 1-866-735-2470. Okay, so we've been talking about glucuronic acid and glucuronidation. It's just hard to say. Don't be intimidated because it's a very powerful concept, and we can use this uh, major detoxification strategy, detoxification pathway, they call it, in the body for our own benefit for dealing with health challenges, all kinds of health challenges, ranging from Alzheimer's disease to cancer to heart disease to autoimmune diseases, chronic fatigue, depression. Glucuronidation is a major detoxifier of the hormone estrogen. And I want to sp uh, definitely want to spend some time talking about that for a little bit. But uh, yesterday at the end of the program, uh, I got a call from a gal uh, whose name escapes me, uh, Kathy, I think. Hopefully she's listening. We're talking about microwave cooking. And uh, she had said that uh, I, I had mentioned in passing to a, a caller that you can microwave your eggs. You can take a couple of eggs, you can crack them into a, into a, a plastic uh, paper cup and stick it in the microwave and then uh, kind of leave it in for 30 seconds, take it out, beat it up again, leave it in another 30 or 40 seconds. You get these perfect eggs. And all you got to do is throw out the cup when you're done. You can eat it right out of the cup. You can chop some onions in there and make like a mini scrambled egg deal. And scrambled eggs, by the way, typically are not a great way to cook your eggs because you're you using high heat. So anyway, this gal kind of ripped into me a little bit. She's very nice. Um, and she, she sort of uh, just kind of gave me a little bit of a hard time about saying that micro to suggest suggesting microwaves, so just suggesting using a microwave. Now I will say using a microwave, microwaves in general, is probably not a great thing to have, be surrounded with microwaves or too many microwaves or they're, they're very uh, fast moving waves and the body isn't, isn't meant to be dealing with a whole bunch of microwaves. That's for sure. However, 
her point was is that it's well known that uh, microwave cooking destroys nutrients. Now, I've heard this before that microwave cooking destroys nutrients, but I've never really been seen it never really made sense to me and I don't really pay attention to th everything that I read on the internet unless it makes biochemical and biological and chemical sense to me. And it never really made chemical sense to me that microwaving would be worse than cooking. Now, cooking in general, heating in general, is going to destroy nutrients. So we got to factor that in. That's true. Boiling your eggs or whatever you do, to the extent that you use heat, you're going to lose nutrients, even just in a stove. Her point was that it destroys nutrients, okay? Now, I had never... I, it never really made sense to me. I never really heard a, a really logical mechanism for that to happen. I'm always looking for mechanisms. Any good chemist that wants to see the mechanism before they just read something, just because somebody said something, I want to see the mechanism. Yeah, it's, I've read it on the internet, but I've read it as an assertion. I've never read it. I've never really seen the tech, the technical, uh, uh, technical aspects with the mechanism, the tech, the way it happened. So I, anyway, I got on the internet, did a little bit of research, and guess what I found? Okay. I found, there was not a lot of research on this stuff, by the way, but what I did find were things like microwave cooking saves nutrients. Nutrients are actually conserved when you microwave. Not only does microwave not destroy nutrients more than cooking, it actually conserves them. So reading from, uh, this is a paper from the Institute of Food Chemistry and Nutrition uh, uh, in De uh, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Denmark. Several studies have shown th that microwave cooking, quote, I should say, quote, several studies have shown that microwave cooking, if properly used, does not change the nutrient content of foods to a larger extent than conventional heating. In fact, suggests, uh, uh, research suggests that there is a tendency towards greater retention of many micronutrients with microwaves. So not only does it not destroy nutrients, you actually save nutrients. Another one, CRC Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition, 1982. Uh, the effect of microwaves on nutrient value of cooking. Quote, overall, the nutritional effects of microwaves on protein, lipid, and minerals appear minimal. Continuing. It is concluded that there quote, it is concluded that there are only slight differences between microwave and conventional cooking on vitamin retention in foods. No significant differences exist between foods prepared by conventional microwave methods. And then another paper, this one from the Journal of the American Dietetic Association, August 1985. Microwave cooking technology, uh, where is, let, let, let's get to the point here. Um, oh, this is really interesting. Quote, microwave cooked bacon had lower levels of nitrosamines, that's the bad stuff, than conventionally cooked bacon. However, the use of, oh, no, we're, no, that's not what I want to read here. Studies show equal, and this is where I want to read. Quote, studies show equal or better retention of nutrients for microwaves as compared to conventional reheated foods for thiamine, riboflavin, pyridoxine, folicin, and ascorbic acid. That's basically the B complex and vitamin C. You save nutrients when you use a microwave. So the point I want to make here is not to, you know, pick on anybody, but the point I want to make here is you just got to be careful about what you read. You got to People make assertions all the time on the internet, claims all the time. There's so much nonsense. One of, my, one of the things I talked about before, nonsense, is the idea that vitamin C is not vitamin C. That somehow vitamin C is not vitamin C, it's, it's synthetic, it, it's not the real thing. You read this on the internet. That's just one thing that I, I recall I'm just seeing here about vitamin C. It's all these claims that people make, and just because you're a chiropractor doesn't make you a scientist. I'm sorry to say to, to my chiropractor friends. Just because you're an acupuncturist doesn't make you a scientist. Just because you're a doctor doesn't make you a scientist. Just because you're a pharmacist doesn't make you a scientist. You gotta think scientifically. Making claims and making assertions is not thinking scientifically. Scientists don't make claims and don't make assertions. They back things up in, with a, a coherent and logical mechanism. A way that these things happen and that's um, and, and that's really the point, the take-home message here. So as far as microwaves go, you know, you're just, you, cooking is not great, except for uh, with certain foods. Cooking is actually the way we're supposed to eat, like uh, cooking meat. Cooking meat, well, actually, you know what? Even cooking meat can be a problem. Cooking meat tends to release some of the nutrients, though. But on the other hand, raw meat has a lot of advantages, too. All right. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about glucuronic acid. If you've got any comments, by the way, about microwaves or anything else that we're talking about or questions or health challenges you want help with, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we'll be back right after this. Who has okay, 
We're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 at Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can also purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And of course, you can also check out our Truth Skin Health products, which I'd love you to do, our Truth Treatments, uh, Truth uh, Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so I want to continue talking about this uh, detoxification pathway called glucuronidation. Glucuronidation, as hard as it is to say, is really important to understand. It's one of the ways the liver detoxifies and processes uh, hormones, processes all kinds of toxins. The liver is an incredible, absolutely mind-blowing organ in the body, maybe the most mind-blowing organ in the body, along with the heart and the brain. That, that's hard to say, but it is really, the things the liver does is crazy. It processes our amino acids and processes our fats and B vitamins and vitamin A and minerals and iron. And on top of everything else, it's responsible for detoxification and it, and it accomplishes its detoxification roles by manipulating molecules, tweaking molecules, changing molecules. And one of the ways it changes them is by sticking a glucuronate on them. Glucuronate is just another molecule. It sticks this molecule on it and it kind of deactivates the poisons. That's called glucuronidation. You stick a glucuronate on it. Glucuronidation is especially important for the metabolism and the processing of estrogen. Glucuronidation also, by the way, doesn't just occur in the... Uh, uh, in the liver, it also occurs in the intestine. So estrogen is actually broken down in the liver and in the intestine. And these two factoids, these two very important points are unspeakably significant when it comes to whether we're going to be sick or not. Mostly women, but definitely men too. Glucuronidation that occurs in the liver and in the intestine has a major role to play in how sick we will be. That is, the liver and the intestine play two major, major roles in our health via this glucuronidation, and specifically glucuronidation of estrogen. There's many health issues that have been attributed to estrogen. And I am, I've talked about this for years, about how uh, you've got to balance your estrogen, you've got to clear your estrogen. PCOS is an estrogen issue. PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS, a lot of you guys have probably heard of PCOS now, but 10 years ago, nobody knew or had heard of it, even though it's been, we've known about it for decades. Polycystic ovarian syndrome shows up as, well, polycysts many cysts on the ovaries, polycystic ovaries. Whenever you have polycysts, and you can have them in various parts of your body, you can have them in your skin, you can have them in your kidneys, you can have cysts grow everywhere, but they specifically grow on the ovaries for a good reason, because estrogen plays a major role in the development of cysts. When you have cysts anywhere, you have an estrogen issue as well as an insulin issue. And polycystic ovarian syndrome is indeed an estrogen and, and uh, also insulin issue. These two, these two fin, uh, hormone issues go hand in hand. Depression is an estrogen issue. Excessive body fat is an estrogen issue. Hypothyroidism is, a, is an estrogen issue. And when I say an estrogen issue, I mean it has to do with how estrogen is processed. More women than men are victims of Alzheimer's disease. More women than men are victims of fibromyalgia. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a female issue. Autoimmunity is a female issue. And these are all indicators of estrogen problems, of poorly processed estrogen. And when I say poorly processed, in many ways, I'm talking about glucuronidation. I'm talking about the intestine, the health of the intestine. I'm talking about the health of the liver. Once again, you see that all roads lead to the digestive system. The liver is a digestive organ in a way, and the intestine certainly is an intest intestinal a digestive organ. And estrogen issues need to be regarded as digestive issues and liver issues. And this is especially, especially important to keep in mind if you're taking 
hormone replacement therapy. If you're taking est a pharmaceutical estrogen and not metabolizing estrogen correctly, you are playing with fire. Even if you take so-called bioidentical hormones. This is where chiropractors and, and naturopaths and natural doctors who recommend so-called hormone replacement therapy because they think they're doing their patient good uh, by going bioidentical, and a lot of doctors now are, and naturopaths think, oh, it's bioidentical. What they're not taking into account is if you have an intestinal problem or a liver problem, you are not gonna process that estrogen correctly. And that's where HRT, hormone replacement therapy, becomes a really big problem. Oh, how many people do you think have an intestinal issue and a liver issue? Uh, pretty much everybody. It may not be significant enough to cause you great distress, but pretty much everybody's gonna have a problem there. How many people do you think are glucuronidating effectively? Certainly, it's not, it's not everybody who's taking HRT, and if you're not doing it correctly and you're taking HRT, or also, by the way, the birth control pill, which is like a mega dose of estrogen, at least HRT, they're, they're, you know, they take into account physiologic doses. Birth control pill, just the logic of the birth control pill is let's just pound the body with so much hormones, it doesn't have any, it th completely throws off the baby making machinery. The baby making machinery runs on hormones. So the logic of the birth control pill is let's just swamp the hormone system, just overwhelm it, saturate it, so it just doesn't know what to do and it just shuts down. That's how the birth control pill works. Now, when you think about it that way, and that's what's happening pharmacologically, and when you think about it that way, you, you gotta say, why, how could anybody, how could any doctor do that to a patient, and why would any patient do that? As convenient as the birth control pill is. And it's the same thing with pharmaceutical estrogen and bioidentical hormone, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is only slightly better. And oh, more, if you're on other drugs, now, you, oh, now you've added to the glucuronidation. Glucuronidation occurs with drugs and it occurs with, with um, burnt byproducts and alcohol. A lot of things get glucuronidated and the system can be overloaded. So if you are taking drugs or drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes, and by taking drugs, I'm talking prescription drugs. I'm not just talking about illegal drugs, although those too, but I'm talking prescription drugs that we get from the doctor. Those have to be glucuronidated. You see how the system becomes overloaded. This is where we really run into health problems, and they don't show up on the side effect profile. You know, when, you, when, a, when a drug company does a side effect study, they do side effects on a certain dose of a certain drug. They don't take into account all the other drugs you're taking. They don't take into account the cigarette smoke and the, and the lousy food and all the, other, all the other ways, the liver problems, the intestinal problems, all the other things that happen to, uh, to, to overload the body's detoxification systems that cause maybe heart uh, diseases uh, that are, have nothing to do with the, uh, the side effect profile. You may, you're more likely to get heart disease and have a heart attack, and you'll get a heart attack, and they'll say, well, we don't know what caused that heart attack, probably cholesterol. Not, nobody taking into account this whole the whole nature of overwhelming the detox system so more toxicity builds up in the body. And nutritional deficiencies, by the way, also play a role because it takes nutrition to process all these toxins, to, to, de to use to, uh, uh, for the detoxification system to do its work. All right, 844 is our number. I'm Farm Suspend. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. What? On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or our True Skin Health products or a common or success story or health challenge that you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. From the... Uh, University of Punjab in Pakistan. I think I might have read this already, actually. I'll read it again. Vitamin D improves weight gain and brain development in malnourished children. Vitamin D is a building vitamin. I got a letter, an interesting letter a couple days ago about cholecalciferol, which is a form of vitamin D, which is, vitamin D comes in different forms, but it's this, the form you'll see in supplements. And it turns out that vitamin D 
is involved in calcium metabolism, by using high doses of, cal of vitamin D, you can actually induce uh, changes in the way the bones process calcium that can uh, cause death. And it, that's why cholecalciferol is used as a rodenticide. It's used to kill rats. So in a way, cholecalciferol, vitamin D, is rat poison. And so this guy wrote me a letter, and he wants to know if he should throw out all his vitamin D. Or if you should, if you should, if you should get, not use vitamin D, not use cholecalciferol. That, it's kind of an interesting question because if vitamin D, what is it with vitamin D? First of all, it would do something like that. Well, vitamin D is not really a vitamin. It's a hormone. It has hormone-like effects. Vitamins are completely benign because vitamins are either used or not used. You can't overdose on a vitamin. However, you can theoretically overdose on a hormone because hormones bypass the cell's wisdom. This is the problem, or one of the big problems I have with hormone replacement therapy, is hormones bypass the cell's wisdom. When you give a cell a vitamin, it's like saying, here's some raw material, do, it, do with it what you will, Mr. Cell. When you give it a hormone, you say, turn on. Hormones turn things on. The word hormone means I arouse to activity. I turn things on. Hormones are like switches. Actually, they're like plugs. They're like a, a, a plugs that fit into sockets. A hormone's like a plug, and there's little sockets in a cell, and the plug sits in the socket, and the circuit is, is opened up, or a circuit is closed, maybe, is better off saying, but electrical, uh, an, electrical, uh, an electrical action occurs. The plug hits the socket, and electrical action hit, occurs. That's called a hormone. That's how hormones work. Versus vitamins, which can be used or not used depending on what the cell needs. That's why you don't. You could take ridiculous amounts of vitamin C and ridiculous amounts of the B complex, and you just lose pee them out. You could take ridiculous amounts of vitamin E, and your body will store it. Vitamin D and vitamin A act like hormones. They have hormone-like effects. And so you got to be a little bit careful with vitamin D and vitamin A. That's why the best way to get your vitamin D and vitamin A is from food. And the best way, to, well, the best way to get all your vitamins is from food. Ideally, unfortunately, they're not in foods. But vitamin D, you've got another way to get vitamin D, and that is from the sun. And that's the best way to get your vitamin D. In fact, the vitamin D that comes in from the sun is of a higher, a better quality than the vitamin D that we get from food or from supplements. It's a form of vitamin D that, the, without getting into too much chemistry, it's a form of vitamin D that the body can use very readily. It's actually, we talked about this before. The form of vitamin D that has more electrical activity that can pass through liquids and the blood much more readily. And when you get your vitamin D from the sun, your body has a shutoff mechanism. So you won't get too much vitamin D. That's why you want to get out in the sun. And that's why there's nonsense that you still hear from dermatologists about staying out of the sun is so unhelpful. It's so not healthy. It's so... It, 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 deprives people of their best source of vitamin D. This dermatologist say, oh, you can get your vitamin D from supplements. No, you can't. I mean, you can, theoretically, but it's not going to be the same stuff. You also have to have your kidneys working well to, get, to maximize the benefit from vitamin D, your intestine, your liver. All of these systems have to be operating correctly. Once again, because remember, it's a hormone. So once again, showing that uh, there's, more to, there's more to supplementing and there's more to good nutrition than just taking pills. You, the entire system has to be operating pristinely. The uh, entire system, that includes the digestive system especially, which includes the liver. And, of course, probiotics are the key to the whole thing. Good bacteria are the key to whole, the, whole, the whole thing, especially when it comes to hormone processing, by the way, as we'll talk about tomorrow. Probiotics, the microbiome, plays a major role, major, major, major role when it comes to estrogen processing. All right, let me read one more here, and then we'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. This is... Uh, this one's from, uh, you know, it seems like I've read these before. I'll read this one again. I don't, I don't know if I've read this before, but this is, uh, magic mushrooms might ease depression symptoms. Psilocybin, the main ingredient in magic mushrooms, may soothe symptoms of depression, according to a study. I think I did read this already. David Nutt, uh, uh, professor of psychopharmacology, that's an interesting name, David Nutt, uh, professor of psychopharmacology at Imperial College of London said, uh, these initial, initial findings are exciting and provide another treatment avenue to explore, unquote. And so what we find, again, is that drugs that are illegal, for whatever reason, taboo mostly, 
may have some benefits, and that's very unfortunate for people who are depressed. Magic mushrooms have been used to treat people who have uh, ca- who are dying of cancer, and they, apparently it puts them in a better mood. Apparently, it puts them in a positive mood. Mushrooms, fungi, things that grow out of the ground. Once again, showing this absolute crazy, number one, craziness, and number two, unfairness of depriving people of things that can help them that grow right out of planet Earth, that were given to us out of planet Earth. Plants and vegetables were, are the gift of the, are God's gift to us. And nobody has a right to deprive somebody of, of something that, they, that grows out of the ground that they can use for food or medicine. Nobody, no government. It's just rude. It's unfair and anti-human being, in my opinion. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Bob in Oregon and say good morning. What's up, Bob? How you doing? Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I've with, been with Longevity about six years, and I come across a really sticky one. I have a 17-year-old uh, female. Uh, she's been through all the children's hospitals around here in Oregon and finally went to the Mayo Clinic, and here's what they came up with at the Mayo Clinic. Yeah. Idiopathetic hypersomnia. She sleeps 20-plus love- hours a day. She sleeps a lot? Periodic. She sleeps. She sleeps a lot. Okay. Okay. So let's. I love that diagnosis, though. That's really interesting. So it's. It it sounds idiopathetic. It it sounds idiopathetic because it's basically a pathetically idiotic diagnosis. But it's not really idiopathic, which means. Idiopathic. Right. Which means. You know what that means? Idiopathic. No. It means we have no idea what it is. Literally. Idio idea. (laughs) I'm not kidding you. That's literally the Latin. Idiopathic means idio. We have no idea. Pathic means something's wrong. We have no ideas. We got. It's just the idea making mechanism is not working. Idiopath. When you hear idiopathic hypertension or idiopathic hypersomnia, idiopathic before a word, that means we have no idea. I'm not kidding. That's literally what it means. I'm not being facetious. That's literally what it means. Sure. And then hypersomnia, hyper means a lot, somnia means sleep. So they have the nerve to diagnose her with, we have no idea why you're sleeping a lot. That's the diagnosis. It, it, Bob, is this the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? This is how doctors work. This is how the medical model works. This is how diagnosis works. All right, so hang on and we'll, we'll discuss when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll, we'll return right after this. Okay, we're back with the bright side, and we do have lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Bob in Oregon about idiopathic hypersomnia. Hey, Bob. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's this. The habit is having needing to sleep a lot is kind of a generic symptom. You can't really pinpoint it to any one thing. It's a sign that the body is basically under duress. It's pooped. It's working hard. It's, the question is, is why is it working hard? Why? It, but it could be a lot of different things. Now, I'm assuming they checked for the major things. Like if there's any cancer going on or any immune activity going on, I'm assuming assuming they checked for all that stuff and they didn't find anything. Is that correct? They just yeah, they basically well, they did two. They had two more periodic limb movement disorder, and I'm sure that's just because she's sleeping all the time and okay. autonomic dysfunction. Okay. Well, basically, that means her her nervous system's not working. But they're not saying why. That that's what the idiopathic right. thing comes from. So it could be a lot of things. It could be nutritional deficiencies. Number one. It could be digestive issues. Number two. It could be uh, liver issues or, or problems with uh, the production of hormones at the level of the the gonads or or the adrenal glands, for that matter. Uh, it could be a whole bunch of stuff. What you need to see, and this is kind of an interesting question, actually, Bob. You got to do what. You got to collect dots. You got triangulate I haven't talked about this for a while but it's a very important this is how you this is how you assess a health challenge in my opinion you've got to look for multiple points of dysfunction at least three if you have one point of dysfunction that doesn't give you enough data it's really about data accumulation you've got to look for other things that are going wrong in the body to form a picture it's kind of like if you have a canvas you have a, a, a whiteboard and you put a dot in the middle of that whiteboard 
You can't. That doesn't mean it. That's just a dot. But then if you put another dot, you can start to see a shape happening, maybe a line. You put a third dot, and you have a finally, you have a triangle. It's called triangulation. You've got a shape. That's a triangle. You say, okay, that's a triangle. A dot is nothing, but three dots give you a triangle. You follow? You see what I'm saying? You got to have three yeah. dots. It's called triangulation. You got to have three dots to get a shape of what's happening. One dot doesn't give you enough information. There used to be a guy who used to paint on TV named Bob Ross. Do you know who Bob Ross is? You ever hear Bob Ross? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He was he got a paint and he show you how easy it was to paint and you put a little brush yeah. stroke and it would be just a line and you put another one and all of a sudden you see like oh my god that's a tree and another line and oh my god that's a that's a river and he just it was always amazing how he did this. Right, but but by putting yeah. by by putting uh, uh, dots or pieces of data on a piece of paper, eventually you get a shape. That's what you're looking to do. This is how you. This is this is the way you do medical forensics or medical. This is the way doctors should be working, putting together symptoms to form a picture of what's happening. But we don't need doctors. We can do it ourselves. That's what we do on this program, and that's what I do when I'm talking on the phone to people. Is I'm asking for multiple symptoms, sleeping issues, or, or one dot on the canvas. I don't have a picture there. It could be a million different things. Now, if you told me she had chronic constipation and she has sleeping issues, or if you told me she had brain fog, sleeping issues, and chronic constipation, now I've got a picture. If you tell me she had high blood pressure or has blood pressure problems and constipation and sleeping issue, now I've got a picture. I can start working. You follow me? However, yeah, let's see. she has, has some other symptoms too. There you go. Now, that's, you don't know what those are, or do you? Yes. Chronic oh, headaches, uh, okay. symptomatic brain, brain iron deficiency. Well, that's not a symptom. Brain iron deficiency is not a symptom, but chronic right. chronic headache. What else? Situational anxiety and depression. Uh, okay, now we're talking. She's, yeah, she's, she's okay, been now we're talking. Eighteen months now. Now we're talking. So her adrenal glands are stressed out. Those are all signs of adrenal adrenal duress. Okay. So now we're dealing with adrenal duress. So now we got to figure out what's the duress caused from. Okay. There's a couple things. There's psychological duress and there's physiologic duress. All right. The most, the most likely, the psychological duress. Well, you know, this is the world we live in. It's very easy to become psychologically duressed. So that's something that needs to be addressed. There's always going to be that lurking behind any disease. And I don't talk about it a lot, but that's needs to be, that's something that needs to be addressed. The second thing now, the second way the body is in duress here, uh, or the adrenal glands are stressed out, is going to be blood sugar and digestion. Those are the two major things. Okay, so I'd be working on, on, on her blood sugar, keeping her blood sugar stable. If she goes into what's called hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, that can cause issues, chronic hypoglycemia. If her insulin is super sensitive, that can be a problem. So you got to work on the blood sugar. That, but the way you do that is a couple things. First of all, you uh, uh, don't eat foods that spike your blood sugar, that induce hypoglycemia. That's the most obvious thing, and that's the desserts and the cakes and the, the, the fast-burning sugary foods, even cereals and grains. And then also use nutrients that make uh, that uh, potentize insulin so you don't need as much of it. Uh, chromium, vanadium, the sweeties, B-complex. Uh, especially B complex, well, I'd be pounding the B complex. Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a great source of B complex. You can get a B100 capsule or tablet that you can use. You can use vegetable juices, which are good sources of, which is a good source of the B complex. Um, more protein and more fat, ketogenic diet. All of these are ways to stabilize blood sugar. And then the digestive system, of course, that's the major source of stress in the body. And if she's got any, I'd be looking for digestive problems. Absolutely. If you find those, you, you, then you've hit the nail on the head. So if you find digestive issues, work on, but even if you don't, just work on the digestive system, probiotics, good bacteria, less food, um, uh, grinding up food, using more fiber, um, fermented foods, that kind of thing. Anything you do for digestive health. So all the, the sleeping issue by itself doesn't tell us, give us enough information, but the fact that she's got headaches and the fact that she's got, uh, uh, what was the other thing you said? You said headaches and something else. I, I forgot what you said, but whatever the... Uh, Whatever it was, those in, those get, lead me to believe that the, her adrenal glands are stressed out, that she's stressed. How's her skin, by the way? You know, I don't know. I've no, I have never. I just I know her dad really well. And we okay. Talk, but ask I about skin. Ask about skin okay. and ask about digestion. 
Both of those are two, peak, two very important pieces of information. Interesting, because the digestive system and the skin are very similar. So things that happen in the digestive system and things you can extrapolate from things that happen in one system, in digestion to the skin and vice versa. So those two kind of systems go together, the skin and the digestive system. And those are also very good points of information. And, and that information I just gave you, Bob, you can use that for everybody. You can use that for everything. Mm -hmm. Look for multiple symptoms, triangulate, focus on digestion, and if you, worse comes to worse and you only have one point or maybe two points, and, and you're always, things don't happen just one at a time. That's the definition right. of a system. The definition of a system is everything is connected to everything else. You see what I'm saying? So things don't happen one at a time. Nobody just has fibromyalgia. Nobody just has sleeping issues. Nobody just has fibrosis. You have multiple, there's multiple sim symptoms going on because the body is a system. It's like a field. It's like first base is connected to second base is connected to third base. It's all connected to each other. The heart is connected to the liver, is connected to the adrenals, is connected to the nervous system, is connected to the, uh, the skeletal system, et cetera, et cetera. So this idea, this reductionist, that's what reductionism is, this reductionist idea that you can just isolate specific parts, which is how the medical model works, is a complete fallacy. And it is nothing, nothing it can be, the failure of the medical model is, uh, is, can be laid directly on the doorstep of this idea that we can separate the body into parts that we can just right. treat a sleeping issue, that we can just treat hypertension. That's why they call it idiopathic, is because they don't see all the connecting parts. They just see the sleeping issue. They don't see the web-like nature of symptomology, how it's all connected to everything else. So they call it idiopathic. Well, we don't know what caused it, it just happened. That's what idiopathic means, yeah. it just happened. Yeah. So, all right, does that help you? I, I, I hope I, you can take some of that information and you know, use it. In addition to it just being theoretical, you can use some of those practical ideas, blood sugar, yeah. work on the digestive system, B vitamins, et cetera. You know what else? Moving the, moving the circulatory system, amping up the zeta potential, the electrical energy in the, in the circulatory system can help. So get her, get her moving, get her on a rebounder, get her on a, 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 some kind of exercise program, resistance training. Have her build her body up. That could be another strategy. Okay. And don't underestimate the psychological issues. There's a, there is a, uh, you know, it's a coping mechanism to feel tired. It's a way of coping with, with psychological duress to just feel tired. A lot of de depressed people are, feel tired all the time. So oh, that can okay. happen. You, you know, hypersomnia can be a sign of depression. And it could be something like that. And, and depression, you know, while it does have some, obviously has some physical correlates, is really something that has to be addressed at that level if you have depression. In addition to doing things physically, you always have to deal with emotional issues at that level, not just physiologically. But I hope that helps, Bob. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. And that you is it. We have, uh, is, this, is this archived? Yeah, absolutely. It's archived. Go to benfuchsarchives.com. All the shows are archived. Great. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bob. Take care. All right. That's it for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now. Yeah.